Back in the 1900s, turn of the century, uh, they weren't as sophisticated with computers as we were, but now, nowadays, so carburetors are hard to find, and it's hard to find these old cars that haven't rusted out that have carburetors. They are still used in racing, um, on some race engines, some race engines used the EFI. Um, anyway, a carburetor is just, I essentially like to call it, and in layman's terms, it might make more sense to people, is if you called it a toilet bowl. All it does is just hold fuel, and wait for it, and then it goes into the engine, and it's combusted. Basically, like when you flush the toilet, when the carburetor stays like that, it's got float chamber. It's got the float chamber that holds the float open and keeps the fuel in and gets new fuel when it needs to. Uh, main difference, though, between a carburetor is and a fuel injection, also uh, pressurized anyway. Some pressurized injection vehicles can have from 20, uh, sometimes even at most to 40. You know, they go up higher for race engines, but for normal cars, it's about that range, PSI, for fuel um, mileage anyway. Uh, carburetors, they're only running about, uh, I'd say, 4 to 10 PSI to the fuel lines and back and that's why they use mechanical fuel pumps to do it because they don't really need that much fuel. The difference also is carburetors can also they never it's very rare to find them to ever get bad gas mileage they'll pretty much get bad gas mileage they'll pretty much burn anything. Before this truck this time uh, it was a lead burner so the fuel back in the days was lead they used lead for their fuel and that's how come it burn anything. Lead fuel is so unpure, it's got so much impurities in it that these cars just ate it up. They didn't care what it was. They didn't have computer systems that say, look, the check engine light's on. They just liked it. Kind of, that's why I kind of like them, because you don't have to have a check engine light on, a little stupid annoying light on the dash for it. So. Good to drive this truck again. Gas prices are $3.99 here a gallon, US dollars. Getting higher. I'm gonna have to fill up one of these days before it gets too much. 17 gallon tank don't matter too much though. So. For that F-150, we got a 25 gallon tank. It costs $72 to fill up. Used to be $72. So back home. Summertime here, I like it. No school, no nothing anymore. So, this is the 72 Ford F100. Good little truck. Not a little truck, it's a full-size truck. So, a little history, more history for you if you want a history lesson on the Ford pickup line. Sport Custom was the second line model compared to the Ford Ranger was your top of the line. This would be the mid-line model. And um, Custom would be a regular line model. Now, the uh, difference was, too, in a lot of the Sport Customs, and they did offer it in a lot, but AC was an optional thing. This truck does not have AC in it. It was an option from Ford where the factory, the factory wouldn't install it. They send the parts to the dealer, and the dealer wouldn't install it. But it's just basically a rail that goes underneath that little metal lip there, and it's the AC condenser unit. Then you'd have an extra pulley for your AC uh, compressor. So... That was that Ford here, for this year anyway, back home. Oh, there's your tire marks. You see a little tire markage there from where we just came out. Not really sitting too badly. It got rained on. That's why it looks like it had been sitting longer. Hear that motor, man, that sounds good. Sounds healthy, it's a healthy Ford motor. So I'm gonna park her back in the driveway. 
for today. Then later on I'll fill her up. Now before I go, I already have about 20 minutes put on the video, so this might be three parts here. Don't know. I'll show you that butterfly that I'm talking about when it heats up in the morning and the after you're all nice and heated and warm. Roll up these windows, looks like it's gonna rain out there a little bit. She's in for restoration someday. Not right now though. I'll show you what I mean. Radiator overflow tube. Okay. See how that butterfly is open? Before, when I recorded the video, it was closed. And since it's warm and it's got cool, it's got nice warm exhaust gases. That's basically what's keeping it warm right now, keeping that uh, butterfly open makes it so much nicer when that butterfly is open. They're not as sluggish and uh, such like that. So it's nice. There's the. This is the mechanical fuel pump I was telling you about. I believe it's on. Can't remember what side on this Ford it was. I know in Dodge. Yep. There's the fuel system. And right underneath. Oh, uh, a little bit too far. Underneath this pulley, underneath your hydraulic pulley, you can see it better. Right there, that's your fuel uh, filter on this Ford. And the fuel pump's just right above it. Generally on uh, newer carbureted vehicles would be 76. They have the fuel filter in line with the carburetor, so it'd be on that fuel system. Um, word of the device for people, do not get the Harbor Freight cheapy air horn system that they sell for $19. It sounds like crap. I didn't want to record a video because it would degrade the um, classicness of this truck. So I'll show you what the real Ford horn original sounds like. I like the Ford horn on this one. Really quick, There's a, I lost it in the steering wheel from a long time ago story to come later I guess you could say. I broke the cup and I had to replace a lot of stuff in there so here's the horn. That's the, what an old Ford horn sounds like. Well I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed my little lecture that I gave about carburetors. They're not as fancy as fuel injection but it's what you start off with first and then you improve on designs later. So. Say goodnight, Ford. Ford. Old Ford, new Ford. Later.